Welcome to Puppetize 2021. I'm going to give you a demo of how I, how I use Puppet Bolt in combination with Terraform to do automated cloud deployments. My name is Martin Alfke. I'm CEO and co-founder of Example42. Um, I'm using Puppet back since 2009. Um, I'm a Puppet trainer since 2011, the official Puppet trainer. And I'm doing uh, officially Puppet uh, consulting since 2015. At Example42, we do Puppet consulting, we do training and customer individual Puppet code development. And uh, if you need further information, you can find me on Twitter, GitHub or Slack with my handle Tuxmir. The demo I'm going to do has to do with a training setup when we do customer individual training or workshops, because we have to build up systems that they can access. So the first thing I want to do is demo you how we at the moment do the stuff. At the moment, we still have a shell script. I will start this shell script. We will have a look on the shell script afterwards. Uh, it's just about spinning up the instances that might usually take up to 20 minutes. So it should be enough for this demo to complete in time. And as you can already see, the script starts by running Bolt tasks, for example, running Terraform apply. Prior I'm moving to the code, I first want to give you a, an insight on how we started dealing with cloud instances and how we came to Puppet Bolt. So the reason why we are using a cloud-based instance uh, is, for example, that we had to deliver trainings or workshops during pandemic. And we've learned that there is a huge difference if you have people sitting together in a room in front of a well-known laptop in a well-known network environment where you know what is possible and what is not, compared to people being at home at the company laptop, maybe even connected via VPN to the company and trying to access systems over SSH out in the cloud. So we had to build a solution where the customers were asking us, we must have browser-based access only. There is no reason, there's no SSH access for people being inside the company network using the company laptop to access systems out in the cloud via SSH. So having browser-based access is a hard requirement for the workshops we are doing. In the first step, we just did Terraform and we had really a huge shell script for installing a Puppet server. Might it be an open source Puppet server, a Puppet enterprise Puppet server, and doing the agent installations uh, for all the systems that we need within a workshop environment. This shell script was, let's say, a pain to maintain. We had duplicate code inside. Uh, we had the information about what kind of systems do we deploy hard coded into Terraform. And we learned that this does not offer the right flexibility that we need when we do customer individual workshop, where we maybe need different kinds of setups for different customers and different workshops. So in the next stage, we also learned that we do that when we do the whole provisioning via Terraform, systems might be finished too early, for example, the Puppet agents, because the Puppet server is still in the process of installing or finishing its installation. So that was the point where I thought, OK, Puppet Bolt is meant for orchestration. Maybe I should move over to Puppet Bolt, have a look. What is it that Puppet Bolt can offer me to spin up cloud instances and using Puppet Bolt for orchestration purposes? The second issue where we had the hard coded Terraform information was, for example, that the nodes differ from setup to setup. Maybe we have different nodes depending on the workshop we are doing. So we decided to have a static Terraform that is completely controlled by having data available. The actual state of code that we have right now is still a shell script. We are in the, we are in the process of moving away from the shell script to bold tasks and afterwards having a puppet plan. I will demo that and showcase this later on. So at the moment, we have bold tasks for the Terraform-based cloud deployment. 
We have bold tasks for the installation of Puppet Enterprise. We have bold tasks to install either Puppet open source agents or using the simplified Puppet Enterprise installation. We have bold task, not really a bold task, it's just a command. We're running Wirebolt uh, to deploy our code into the Puppet server and to trigger the Puppet agents runs in an orchestrated pattern. There's just one more issue that we have at the moment. Bold orchestration, when you spin up a bold project, means we are having a static inventory file at the moment. Um, this is something that we want to fix in the next stage, which is still a work in progress. So let's move over to the shell. As we already can see on our script window, uh, we have waited for the DNS update uh, to propagate uh, and we're already starting an installation of Puppet Enterprise. So at the moment, we have still a shell script. It almost fits on one page. Let me scroll a little bit up so that we can see the complete beginning. Beginning. So, as you can already see, there is the most important thing. There is a to-do. Migrate this shell script into a Puppet plan. That's still an open work in progress. At the moment, we hard code. Where do we find the Terraform information? So, where is the Terraform code located and where is the WAR file located? In this WAR file, we have all information in, in this variable file, the secrets file. We have all information inside that we need to ensure which Puppet version do we want to install, which Puppet Enterprise release we want to install. We must have to do this in a flexible way because some customers request for workshops where they say, we must start with Puppet 5 because it's our actual setup, and then we want to do an update to Puppet 6. Other customers saying, let's start with a Puppet Enterprise version 2019.8.1, so that within the workshop, we can also do an upgrade to a more modern Puppet Enterprise version. So we can't just use the latest versions of Puppet. We are depending on what is the customer's requirement. Then you can already see we do a bold task and bold already has several, um, several tasks and plans built in. One of them is the Terraform apply task. We can run this on a specific target. In this case, we are just doing localhost. We provide the information where is the Terraform code and where are the variables files, where are the secrets. Next, we make a differentiation whether we want to install Puppet open source on our Puppet server or if we want to do Puppet Enterprise. The Bolt delivers a Puppet task built in, which is meant to install Puppet agents, but this is only working for version 6 and 7 and no longer version, working for version 5. That's the reason why I've built an own Bolt task that installs the Puppet 5 agent. And we have created a task that installs an open source master. For Puppet Enterprise, the setup that we have here at the moment, we also have created a task that installs the Puppet Enterprise master. We provide some parameters like which PE version is it that we want to have installed and what is the console password that we need. And afterwards, we do a Puppet Agent run. So we're just running a command. Also, via Bolt, this is what you can see is running on the Puppet system at the moment. The last couple of steps are then again running a Puppet Agent on the Puppet server, then triggering an RTNK based code deployment. We are working on making this also working with the Puppet Enterprise Code Manager. Once we have our code deployed, we run again a Puppet agent to get our changes which are for the Puppet server and our control repository. And if it's not an open source installation, we use the simplified installer by curling from our Puppet server the installer script. As if we do want to do an orchestrated way, we ensure that the Puppet service is not directly started and that it's not started via boot. And afterwards, we just specify that we want to have Puppet agent runs first on the student machines and afterwards on the centralized login server. So this is where we need the orchestration. We first need a Puppet server. We then need instances for the students. And afterwards, we need the login server. 
When we have a view on our Bolt project, we see we have inventory YAMLs, as I mentioned, statically at the moment, not really uh, super dynamic, um, but at least it gives us the possibility to, uh, yeah, we just ignore the errors for systems that we are not spinning up. And as you can see, within the Bolt project, we have a modules directory where we have a Puppet installation module. And here you see all the tasks that we are using. We have a PE master install description file, and we have the shell script. We have the Puppet 5 agent installation uh, description file and the shell script. And the same is what we have for the Puppet open source master installation. I mentioned to you that we take all the data out from a secrets file. So this is a non-secret secret files because I have removed the secrets like our cloud token and our DNS token. Um, we provide information about uh, someone who wants to make use of this platform must just provide the tokens, must provide an information which SSH key to use to deploy into for the deployment in the cloud. Where is the control repo git URL? And we must provide an internal and a public subdomain, and we must provide the information which Puppet Enterprise release is it that we want to install. And afterwards, we're adding machines to it. We can specify multiple machines. In this specific case, as I mentioned, I've commented out uh, just for showcasing is uh, we can deploy a GitLab, we can deploy a login server, a runner server. The most important information that we want to use in the next stage when we move to a plan is that we put inside the Terraform data these systems already in order. That means we have generic Terraform code. And for every deployment that we need, we easy just put the secrets into a specific file and then just run the tasks by providing the information, which of the secrets file is it that I should use and restore them also in different state files. So let's have a look what our instances are doing at the moment. So I'm moving over. As usual, when we spin up a Puppet server, it uses a self-signed CA. We are not doing directly write certificates. We are using the self-signed certificates. So I'm going to continue to my Puppet Enterprise setup. And I can already log in in my console. And I see I have one single system at the moment, which is my Puppet Enterprise Master. And uh, here I see in the window that we have the 2019.8.5 version already with us. So the Puppet server is already ready because it's the first instance that we are deploying using Bolt. Let me also show you from within Bolt our inventory.yaml file. At the moment, this is the inventory YAML file purely for this puppetized demo. As you can see, we have the Puppet Master, we configure the transports, we have the student machine, we have the login server. We decide which root key, which SSH key to use, and that we please don't do strict cost key checking. So we order our puppet bold runs by using these group names. So if we have a single puppet master or multiple puppet master, it make, makes no difference for us. If we have a single machine or multiple student machines, it makes no change to us. We just mention the group name within the bold targets. That's the actual state of our code. The future plans is that we want to have some tasks that are more reusable. Let's say it's tasks that are almost similar. They just have slight differences. So we want to make them more configurable. We call them meta tasks, uh, that we just offer some parameters to them to uh, get rid of several of the tasks that we are having. We want to migrate from a wrapper shell script to a real bold plan so that we can also having uh, uh, including error handling and return value handling. And what we definitely want to do is we want to stop having the bold inventory YAML as a fixed file inside our bold project. We want to use the Terraform output task from bold 
to generate an automated pattern on how we are able, uh, yeah, how we are able to orchestrate our systems. At the moment, this is just an idea, but I can also show you the very first demo code for it. As you might know, let's move this to highlight. A Puppet plan is something that is written in Puppet DSL language. We provide info parameters for uh, which PE version would we like to see and which Terraform data that we would like to use. Is it meant for a Puppet training? Is it meant for a Ruby training? Has a team maybe a team A file provided? And, uh, and we can, of course, say the Terraform server is not running on local host. Maybe the Terraform server where the Terraform code is deployed, where people store their secrets and credentials and their SSH keys, this might be a re maybe a remote system. We do a task running for the Terraform apply. And afterwards, we run a task again, but not for Terraform apply, but for Terraform output. And I've, within the comments, I've provided you an information. What is it that Terraform output will deliver to us? It will give us the FQDN of the system, a hash of FQDNs of the system, where each FQDN again has a hash, where we say, what is the puppet role and what is the order? And the idea is to rearrange this output by saying, I have an order of one, two, three. I'm adding the nodes to it. And afterwards, I can just do puppet code by iterating over the hash and identifying which systems is it that I must run the puppet code on to be in order. This prevents us to even man must be managing an inventory YAML file. Let's have a look at the shell script that is running. And as we can see, it's busy with the student one machine. The puppet master was already done. Now we're waiting um, for the student one machine. What is happening on the student machine is that these are from the cloud provider, bare CentOS or whatever images, but we want to have a graphical interface for the users. So we must install in this case, a complete GNOME desktop for the users. And regardless how much hardware you put into a student machines, it will just take because there's plenty, plenty of packages to install. Let's wait a little bit for this to finish. It usually takes about uh, 15 minutes approximately. We also have other ideas. For example, make code possible in a bold plan so that different teams and use cases can be, can be done. And afterwards, we won't be able to run bold plans either from a CI system, maybe using the script we're having or just running bold plan run, or even via the Puppet Enterprise Console. I also have prepared a non-working demo for running a plan to deploy a cloud via Puppet Enterprise. Within Puppet Enterprise, you can select that you want to run a plan. We select the environment where the plan is located. And here we see we have a profile cloud init plan. We can also view some of the metadata information, like example, what part, kind of Puppet Enterprise installation would we like to, to do. And we've provided a list. So this must be updated every time where a team adds a new data Terraform data file. Then we just say we want to have a puppet training. And optionally, we can say it's not localhost where we have the Terraform code, but maybe on some other system. And this is now not working because the code is incomplete. In this case, uh, we could just start uh, run the job and we get our automated cloud, cloud deployment. The next idea with this plan would to have some kind of retention policy built inside so that we say we have an additional parameter. It's not yet there. Retention policy and we call retention time. And we can, for example, specify, let's, let's uh, run these systems for one week. We are still checking whether we are able to run a task to, to, to create a scheduled task via API call to Puppet Enterprise from within a bold plan so that we automatically also get a teardown scheduled by Puppet Enterprise. So it's not only the spinning up cloud systems 
causing cost on the credit card. It's also to automatically terminate instances after a given period of time. Let's have a look on our Puppet Enterprise server and see whether other systems are already showing up. So at the moment we have a student machine and now we are only waiting for the last machine to finish, which is our login server. As you can see, it's just started on the last system. Um, also an issue we have when we just run a bold task run and we run a puppet agent inside is uh, that we need to, um, in the task, need to identify uh, whether the exit code should be zero or not zero. Uh, because when puppet does changes, it does and successfully does the changes. It does not terminate with exit code zero. The login system should be a little bit more faster. So, ideas are to run bold from plans. We're waiting for the results to finish. While the results are finishing, I can just say, we love the way how bold is working. Terraform is already built in into bold, so you don't have to do a separate installation. So, for example, we can just switch into our project and we can see which kind of tasks do we have. Some of them are coming from our modules. These are the one from our module. Everything else is directly coming from Bold, where you see there's the Terraform apply, there's the Terraform destroy, and there's the Terraform output. Once you have deployed it, you can generate the output, a JSON representation of the Terraform things. Now let's have a look whether everything was working as expected. And of course, it's missing something. So we now can access the systems. And now we connect to the graphical interface and people can just access a graphical desktop via a browser. This is what the customers requested. The solution for getting the, all this done is Terraform in combination with Puppet Bolt. Puppet Bolt, Plask and Plans allows us to do dynamically a configuration for orchestration. Tasks can be parameterized, plans can be parameterized, so they are about super flexible usage also for different kind of cloud configurations that you want to spin up. Thank you.